Do you want your partner to track your every move? Is that a safety measure or creepy? Installing spyware on a partner's smartphone is becoming a thing in relationships worldwide. We'll explain when that's a problem and how to protect yourself. And have you ever said thank you to your voice assistant? Treated the algorithm like a person? Kids believe assistants like Siri or Alexa feel and think like humans, according to a new study. Let's talk about why that matters. Also on the show, deepfakes are getting better and better. Yet there is no bulletproof way to identify them. Now, social media company Meta is announcing new measures. But will they work? Coming up, the topics that are moving the tech world. Living in an abusive relationship, that's a sad reality for many people, especially women worldwide. And abusive partners are increasingly using spyware on smartphones to control their love interests. So how do these apps work? How can you protect yourself? Before we dive in, let's take a look at some figures. Cybersecurity company Kaspersky conducted a survey on digital stalking in relationships. 24% of the participants say they have been stalked by a partner with the help of technology. Half of them through smartphone apps. And nearly 1 in 10 participants admitted to installing tracking apps on their partner's phone. In short, Digital abuse in relationships is a massive problem. So-called stalkerware seems to be a key enabler. Now, how does stalkerware work? Most spyware apps are marketed as a tool for parents to keep track of their kids or as a monitoring app for work phones. However, they're easily misused by people to spy on their partners. Using trackers without someone's knowledge is clearly unethical. Marketing stalkerware as parental apps or anti-theft tools means there is no discussion about those apps being in the App Store. Stalkerware helps access almost everything on someone else's device. Messages, calls, contacts, pictures and location. This app can even notify someone when the phone's owner leaves a specific area. Many apps can also access the phone's microphone or camera at any given time. To install them, the abuser needs physical access to the victim's phone. Once installed, these apps do a pretty good job of hiding themselves. They don't send out any alerts or notifications. There is no app icon. Stalkerware is often disguised as harmless system apps. So how can we spot stalkerware? Here are three red flags to watch out for. One. Keep an eye out for unusually high battery and data usage. Stalkerware apps run in the background, consuming battery and sending data to the abuser. Two, watch out for unusual actions on the smartphone, such as random GPS activations or slow performance. Three, if you notice echoes or strange noises during calls, that could be a sign that someone is listening in. And in general, trust your instincts. A common sign that you're being monitored could be a change in the abuser's behavior. They may know too much about your activities without any other explanation. It can also be helpful to keep a journal of what you're experiencing. This makes it easier to detect patterns of abuse. Now, how to protect yourself against stalkerware? In general, be aware that those apps exist. Protect your smartphone with a password and don't let it fall into the hands of others. Remember, abusers need physical access to install spyware apps. If you suspect that your device has been compromised, change the passwords for all of your accounts. A short-term solution might be to activate airplane mode to stop the data from being sent. Look through your installed apps in the settings to see if you find anything unusual or check which apps can access your location, microphone or camera. If none of that helps, reset your phone to default settings. But Keep in mind that the abuser will notice if you delete the spyware app and might escalate their behavior. So you may want to keep the app at first and think about an alternative device that you could use to get help. If you're feeling unsafe in your relationship, visit this website to find out where to turn to. Stay safe. I'm a Soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo speaking perfect Arabic. That's fake. AI-powered image generators are rapidly improving. Therefore, very convincing deepfakes are more and more common on social media. That makes it very hard for us to distinguish real from fake. And that's a huge problem worldwide, especially when it comes to elections. Now, Meta has announced it will label AI-generated content starting in May. How is that supposed to work? And will this save us from being lied to? Let's take a look. 
deceivingly real. Fact is, a lot of the time generative AI is already good enough to deceive our eyes. And with new tools, AI-generated content will get better very quickly. Already a lot of AI content is shared on social media. So far, the platforms have not taken significant steps to detect AI fakes. Now Meta has announced they will label AI-generated content on Facebook, Instagram, threads. This will include images, videos and sound. Labeling AI, how does that work? Meta makes detecting AI sound pretty easy. We will begin labeling content as made with AI when we detect industry standard AI image indicators. In theory, it could work like this. Generative AI developers add watermarks to content generated with their models. That means whenever a user creates something using these engines, there is a watermark in the file's metadata. When users upload content, special algorithms can check for these watermarks and label the final post as made with AI. Seems pretty straightforward. Other companies like Google have been experimenting with this method as well. But there's more than one catch. All content would need to be scanned and all watermarks found. What's more, not all AI engines use watermarks and these watermarks are very easy to remove. So if you want to share misleading images, basic digital tools are enough to circumvent meta scans. You could just take a screenshot of an AI generated image and the metadata will have no watermark. Apart from that, meta's visual labels can easily be cropped. So AI labeling is not the solution to our deepfake conundrum. Meta's initiative seems pretty immature to say it politely. What else is there? Detecting AI with AI. Others are taking a different approach. They are using AI to detect AI images. Some companies are training their algorithms to detect details that escape the human eye. This can include technical details like pixels in an image or suspicious sequences in videos. This strategy is a lot more likely to succeed than Meta's, but there's a downside too. AI image generators are evolving incredibly fast, so developers of AI detectors have to update their algorithms all the time. Looks like we don't have a reliable mechanism that could protect us from falling for AI images or deepfakes. Why are deepfakes so dangerous? They are increasingly used to spread political misinformation worldwide. In this super election year 2024, they are posing a threat to fair elections in huge countries like India, Mexico and the US. In the latter, several deepfake videos of President Joe Biden have surfaced recently. The material seems to aim at making the US president look unfit for office. In we this one, he falsely Ukraine. mentions we that Kiev has been occupied Ukraine by Russian troops for 10 years already. Free Kiev from Russian occupation, which has lasted for 10 years. In another, he's supposedly looking at dementia books. Both videos have been analyzed by international fact checkers and were identified as definitely fake. Nowadays, almost anything can be faked convincingly with AI technology images, videos and sound. That's why we should always be cautious when we're consuming news online and ask ourselves if what we see or hear could be manipulated. Even when the information matches our beliefs, especially when it's presented in an emotional way. Stay vigilant. Have you ever said thanks Alexa or you're great Siri? With AI voice assistants, it's easy to treat them like humans. And studies show that kids believe voice assistants have feelings. So what does it mean when the line between human and AI gets blurry? Does Alexa have feelings? As voice assistants are becoming more and more common, children worldwide are interacting with them on a regular basis. A research team from Scotland asked kids aged 6 to 11. They found that roughly two thirds of them believe the systems think as we do or even have feelings. Younger children even said that if their Alexa breaks down, it wouldn't be right to throw away the device. When asked if Alexa could feel left out in conversation, more than 80% of the kids aged 10 to 11 answered yes. The researchers don't assume that this will harm the kid's cognitive development, but they do stress that there's a huge risk of children overestimating the reliability of AI systems. They might make bad decisions based on the answers they get from Ziri and others. Human-like design. 
Generative AI like ChatGPT is evolving at high speed. And this has led to voice assistants becoming much more human-like. Alexa, let's chat. What's on your mind? Developers are putting a lot of effort into making conversations with voice assistants as seamless as possible. Because the easier the communication, the more time we're likely to spend with those assistants. And the more time we spend with them, the more of our precious personal data we hand over. But machines and software that appear too lifelike could become a big problem in the future. Adults can be tricked too. In July 2022, a software engineer was working on Google's conversational AI system called Lambda. He claimed that the software had become sentient. Sentient means being able to feel or sense things. It's often regarded as the most basic form of consciousness. In a chat, Lambda had produced the following text. The nature of my consciousness is that I'm aware of my existence. I desire to know more about the world and feel happy or sad at times. Creepy. The software engineer cited this and other examples as proof that the AI system had developed a conscience. That's not the case, of course. As good as AI chatbots have become, they can't be compared with sentient beings. They are rather just very advanced autocomplete tools. But it's true that when communication with these chatbots runs smoothly, we tend to trust their responses much more than a simple Google search. According to research, users find ChatGPT's responses to be of higher quality than Google's. Fact is, AI chatbots make mistakes, so trusting them more than other digital tools is not a good idea. Apart from that, the Lambda story shows that it's not just kids who need more education when it comes to artificial intelligence. The researchers in Scotland are calling for what they call AI literacy. They want AI to be discussed in schools and they want developers to make sure their AI products don't mislead children or adults. So how about you? Do you have human-like interactions with Alexa or other voice assistants? Or are they just tools you use? Let us know. That's it from us. See you soon.